page into the three on page 267. I am given uh, two ordered pairs, like uh, let's say um, 30 on 267, negative 2, negative 4, and 1, comma, negative 1. We're asked to find the equation that passes through these points. So I have two points. I'm given negative 2, comma, negative 4, and 1, comma, negative 1. And I'm asked to find the equation of the line passing through them. So find the equation of the line. passing through these points, also called ordered pairs. What do I have to find first? Wonderful. So when I find the slope, I will always write the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I will label my points x1, y1, x2, y2. And then carefully plug them in. Can anyone dictate? Negative 1. Awesome. Minus. Minus negative 4. Over. Minus 2. 1 minus negative 2, very good. So the numerator is 3. Oh, lucky us. The denominator is 3, so the answer is 1. So first I determine the slope. Next, I analyze, I try to determine, or I determine whether any of these two is the y-intercept. Because if it is, I will use y equals mx plus b, and I'm done. If I don't have the y-intercept, then I have to use the point slope one. Yes, Damien? Uh, I was writing something. How do you get uh, negative, uh, this is negative, uh, four. negative 1 minus negative 4 is negative 1 plus 4. And negative 1. Minus negative 4. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a yeah, minus. Yes, it changes. Right. And 1 minus negative 2 will be 1 plus 2. Gotcha. Perfect. So, is the slope... I'm sorry, forgive me. Is the y-intercept given? Good. So then I have y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. This is the point slope form. It doesn't matter which point you use. I'm going to use the first point. You can say, no, I want to use the second point. Maybe the second point is even easier to work with. It doesn't matter. We will both, we will all get the same answer. So you want to use the first point or the second point? First, very good. So then this is negative 2, and this is negative 4, and this is 1. Again, I don't claim that my method is the best, but this is what I like to do. I write the equation. I put the corresponding values underneath, and now I'm ready to simplify it because I see y minus negative 4 instead of putting parentheses and maybe not distributing negative 1. Who knows what I can come up with? So y plus 4 equals x plus 2 because the slope is 1. I do have to solve for y. Solve for y, which means I have to subtract 4. So y equals x minus 2. What does this represent again? Is the equation of the line that Exactly. That's what it is. It's the equation of the line passing to the given points. Any questions for me? I would like to graph an equation using x and y intercepts because that's the best method. I know you were taught to use the slope. I'm fine with that too. But only one thing I would like you to remember. There is no other function that you can graph using the slope. 
That's why I'm encouraging my students to move away from that. It's the only function that you can graph using the slope. No other function has that option. So I'd rather uh, choose a problem and um, uh, find the x and y intercepts. Uh, let's say 61. On page 267, we are asked to graph using x and y intercepts. Graph using x and y intercepts. Graphing using x and y intercepts. When we try to find the x-intercept, what do we have to write? Yes. Sorry, no, that's fine. When we are trying to find the x-intercept, what do we have to do? We have to set... That's okay. You're right. This is the only one for which we don't determine the domain because it's all real numbers. It will look like this, or it will look like this. So this is the only one that we do not need to find the domain for. It's all real numbers. OK. Um, let's take a look at a coordinate system. So this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. Can anyone um, make up this point for me and this point? Whatever you tell me, it goes. Say it again. Negative 3, 0. Perfect. Please make one up on this side. Very good. So all points on this line have a characteristic. What is that? 4. So what is the equation of this line? Four, exactly. So the equation of this line is y equals zero. So when I want to determine the x-intercept, I set awesome. I'm coming back to this. For the x-intercept, I set y equal to zero. So here's what I do. I cover it. It's gone. How much is x? And don't forget, you have to move negative 18 to the other side and divide by 2. 9. x equals 9. What is the ordered pair that we just determined as being the x-intercept? 9 comma 0. Awesome. Indeed, 9 comma 0. Perfect. Now I want something else from you. I want you to make up two points here. Yes, I was dreaming. Sorry. My apologies. So then this line has what equation? Awesome. So this is x equals 0. So when I want to find the y-intercept, I set awesome. Thank you. Well, I cover it. It's gone. How much is y? Remember, I moved negative 18 to the other side. Yes. So what is the ordered pair that I just determined? Awesome. See, you did not have to solve for y. You did not have to ter move terms around. You didn't have to find the slope. You didn't have to go up and down and left and right and so on and so forth. You only need to determine when x is 0, how much is y, and when y is 0, how much is x. And these points are useful, very useful. The slope is useful, too, because it gives you the rate of change. So there are other things in there, too. OK. So I have two points to plot, 9 comma 0. And 0 comma 6. Connect and extend the line. 
always, always please write the equation somewhere close to the graph. Here it is. So I know what I graphed. Any questions for me? Say it again. No, <coughs> but if the problem is asking you to find the x and y intercepts, you're going to do work for five minutes to determine something, and then you're going to have to do more work to determine the, the x intercept. Because y equals mx plus b does not give you the x intercept. Yeah. Say again. Uh, to find the x and y intercepts. Uh, okay, so here it is. Um, x minus 2y equals 6. We want to graph using x and y intercepts. So how do I find the x intercept? I make y equal to 0. Do we all agree with x equals 6 when y is 0? So the order pair is, I want to find the y-intercept now, set x equal to 0, here it is, it's gone. Damon, is this OK? I that, that so when y is 0, I cover it, and I just get x equals 6. Oh, that's cool. So then 6, 6 comma 0. Cool. And when x is 0, I cover this, and I divide both sides by negative 2 to get x equals y equals negative 3. Better? Then, then solving and dividing and finding the y-intercept and then plotting, going up, down, left, right, see if it's a negative, if it's a negative and if it's positive slope. Not that it's easier, but all functions that you're going to see in this class will require us to find the x and y-intercept in the same way. So this is absolutely necessary moving forward in all, for all functions. But slope, this is the only function that you can use a slope to graph. There is no other. So again, I don't have anything against the method. I'm just saying it's not as useful as this one is. Now, if you remember, we looked at the difference quotient. What did we say the difference quotient was? The rate of change of a function between two points. Good. So on page 279, we are given a function, problem 15, f of x equals x squared plus 2x. And we are given x1 equals 3 and x2 equals 5. So let me write the requirement here. Find the average rate of change of f of x, let me use the lowercase, between point 1 and 2. Find the average rate of change of function f of x between point 0.1 and point 0.2. And you can say, you haven't given us points. And I will have to agree. But when I'm given a function and I'm told x1 is 3, I am given something from a point. And when I'm given the function, I'm told x2 equals 5. I am given some information about another point. So what do I know about point 1? How do I determine the corresponding y value? Exactly. So this will be f of 3. So 3 squared, 2 times 3, 9 plus 6. 
Very good. What do I have about a second potential point? Good. How do I determine the corresponding y? Very good. F of 5. Very good. 5 times 5. 25 plus 2 times 5, which is 10. 25 plus 10 is? Very good. So I do have points. They were not 100% given to us. They were only 50% given to us. And now I want the average rate of change. What will that equal to? It's the slope, slope of the line passing through the points. But we are not going to write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 because we are talking about the average rate. It's the same formula. But it's better to write f of x2 minus f of x1 over over run. Very good. So basically, instead of writing y2, we write f of x2, which is y2. And instead of y1, we write f of x1, which is y1. Right. So now let's plug it in, and that's the answer. 35 minus 15 over 5 minus 3. Top is 20, bottom is 2. The rate of change of this function between the given points is 10. Now, I want to caution you on something. Exactly. Between the given points. For this function only. For this function and between the given points. Now, if you um, call me uh, and I, um, you ask me, what are you doing? And I say, I'm driving. And let's say, okay, what is, look at the, your odometer and tell me what is your speed. This is the rate of change of distance with respect to time rate of change of distance with respect to time. Will I say to you, I'm driving at 60 miles? No, I'm not driving at 60 miles. I'm driving at 60 miles per, miles per hour. So please remember, the measurement unit for something that comes from a ratio will always have a measurement unit that is a ratio. So if I have here distance and I have here time, I cannot tell you that I'm driving at 10 miles. I have to say 10 miles per hour. If the function is the distance and x represents time. Okay. So please remember, the rate of change is always um, is always uh, it's a uh, um, number that in this case we don't have information about f. We don't know what f represents. It's just abstract. And we don't know what x represents. But if f is distance and x is time, then this will be miles per hour, right? So always remember, if an expression or a simplified form comes from a ratio, this will have the measurement unit of this measurement unit over this measurement unit, always. OK, I'd like to look at a problem like 12. On page 279. So I have, I'm given a point and perpendicular to the line whose equation is x plus 7y minus 12 equals 0. So let me explain. I'm going to write what is where we are asked to find. Okay. Here we have the following find the equation of a line passing through 5 comma negative 9 find the equation of a line passing through 5 comma negative 9 and perpendicular this is the mathematical symbol the shortcut for perpendicular to the line whose equation is given to us, x plus 7y minus 12 equals 0. Let's repeat. 
find the equation of a line passing through 5 comma negative 9 and perpendicular to the line whose equation is given to us. So I'm just going to graph the scenario. I'm not really graphing a function or an equation, nothing. I'm just giving you the scenario. Here is a line whose equation I don't have. I have no idea what the equation is. But I am given two pieces of information about this line. I am told that it passes through this point. Oh, okay. So somewhere along the line, I have this point. I'm also told something else. I am told that this line, whose equation I don't have, is perpendicular to this line. Okay. So there is a line that is perpendicular, creating four 90-degree angles, whose equation is x plus 7y minus 12 equals 0. Find the equation of the orange line. How do I do that? Say it again. No, this point does not touch that line. Perfect. So here's the idea. First of all, I'm, first of all, I'm looking at this point. Is this this y-intercept? Because I only have two options. Again, I don't have 15 possibilities. I only have two. Two forms. Either mx plus b or y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Do I have the y-intercept? So I can only use one, if you agree with my method. OK, which, which equation am I going to use then? I can't because that's not the y-intercept, right? Exactly, exactly, perfect. Let's see what we have and let's see what we don't have. So I do have 5 comma negative 9. This is what I'm missing, however, which is a very important piece of information. I don't have it. But I know something about two lines, the relationship between the slopes of two lines that are perpendicular. What do I know? If one is 15, the other one must be? <laughs> negative 1 over 15, so that the product is negative 1. If one slope is 2 thirds, what should the other one be? Negative 3 over 2. Negative three over two. So somehow, as Jason said, find the slope of this one. Because if you have the slope of this one, you will be able to determine the slope of the orange one. So how do I determine the slope of x plus 7, y minus 12 equals 0? What do I have to do? I solve for y and I have everything arranged like this, if I have th that equation and I solve it for y, will I be able to identify the slope? Yes. yes. So that's the key. So I have to solve for y this equation. How do I do that? I move x and I move negative 12. So 7y equals negative x plus 12. What now? Yes, awesome. We will divide both sides by 7. But please don't do this. Please do not do this. It will be difficult to identify the slope. Divide term by term. So don't do this. I'm going to copy it again. So I have 7y equals negative x plus 12. And divide term by term. 7y divided by 7 is 
negative 1 divided by 7 is negative 1 seventh x plus 12 divided by 7 is 12 over 7. Now we can identify the slope of this line. Can anyone give us the slope of this line? Let's call it M2. Awesome. Now can anyone give us the slope of the line that we are really interested in? That's it. Do you all agree with 7? Because the product is negative 1. So now I have everything I need in order to determine the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the given line and passes through this point. So I have y minus minus 9, which is y plus 9, equals 7 x minus 5. Are you with me, everyone? Damon, are you okay? Because um, I'm not sure whether you see from that corner, first of all. You see? I want you to stop me, because maybe others in the room are lost too. So I don't want to lose anyone. So now I will distribute 7, and I have to subtract 9. I have to solve for y. So then y equals 7x minus 44. Can anyone tell us what does this represent? Right, but what does it mean to us? What did we just determine? We determined the equation of a line going through, passing through, comma, 5 comma, negative 9, and to this line. Is that clear? Okay. Now, in the next few minutes, I just want to refresh your memory on some graphs. This is in preparation of the last section. Uh, I already sent to the uh, copy center uh, copies of my previous tests, so we can review next um, Thursday and Tuesday for the for the test the following Thursday. So this is in preparation of the last section, which is 2.5. It's called transformations. However, we are not going to get the chance to talk about them today, but this is a prep that I need for this. We are going to look at what I like to call basic functions. Without these functions, we will not even discuss transformations. Without these functions, transformations mean nothing. We're just going to list them and uh, graph them. Can anyone give us the basic, the simplest possible linear function? There is no other function that is that is linear and it's simpler than this one. That's it. If you graph this function, it will look like this. It will bisect the first and the third quadrants. This is the graph. Is this function odd, even, or not symmetric? It is odd because it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Awesome. Very good. Can anyone give us the simplest possible quadratic function? That's it. There is no other simpler quadratic function than this one. In some previous course, you may have graphed it. We're going to graph it again. But I'm hoping that you remember how does it, the way it looks. What is the graph? How do we call it? A parabola. Very good. Here it is. So f of x equals x squared. And this 
is odd, even, or not symmetric? Say it again. Off. Awesome. Indeed, symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Very good. Um, absolute value. Can anyone give us the simplest possible absolute value function? That's not an absolute value. Very good. The absolute value of x. I completely agree with that. So here's the graph of the absolute value of x. Yes, it's the b function. Yes, thank you for reminding me and remembering that. So this is f of x is the absolute value of x, odd, even, or none of the above. Very good. Symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Awesome. Square root. Can anyone give us the simplest possible square root function? That's it. What is the domain of this function? Say it again. Yes, but we start from left to right. Yes. X must be greater than or equal to zero. So the domain is zero to infinity. Perfect. Good. Here's the graph of the square root of x. Here it is. Odd, even, none of the above. Not symmetric. Very good. Very good. It's not a symmetric function. Two more, and then we'll stop. Uh, cube root. Can anyone give us the simplest possible cube root? Yes, the cube root of x. What is the domain for the cube root? Basically, I'm asking you, can I apply the cube root to negative 8? Can I apply the cube root to 0? Can I apply the cube root to 27? If the answer is yes to all of the above, then the domain is? Indeed. The cube root is friendly. Here's the graph. It reminds us of the square root a little bit. Odd, even, or none of the above. Very good. Symmetric respect to the, one, the origin. Last one. Rational function. We're going to look at this function in Chapter 3 extensively. So, any questions? Okay, I need the simplest possible rational functions. Function. Rational. Nope. If we say rational, what does it have to have? But 1 over x. Indeed, it has to have a ratio. Yeah, very good. So here's the graph. By the way, what is the domain of this function? What is the only problem that I could run into here? X can't equal zero. Awesome. Negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. That's the only potential problem, zero in the denominator. Otherwise, it can be positive or negative. And here's the graph. So 
So this is f of x, 1 over x. Um, odd, even, or none of the above? Indeed, symmetric with respect to the origin.